Orchard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And this is the last episode in our series on this 1978 CJ7. And for those of you who have been following along, this is a vehicle that came to us for inspection, repair, and completion. In other words, it was a conversion that had been started by someone else and they had just about completed it but before they um, got it running um, they had to abandon it and so a little better explanation the vehicle belongs to someone and a friend was converting it for them the friend moved out of state the vehicle was left not quite completed. So the owners contacted us, wanted us to, to inspect it, make sure it was done properly, and to rectify anything that, that wasn't done properly, and to, you know, can take it to completion and make sure this thing was running down the road under its own power. And that's what we did. But it wasn't the, <laughs> this is uh, what you run into with repairs. It wasn't what you would hope for. It was instead a very long and drawn out ordeal. And so we'll do a walk around and a little overview here. And we'll finish this up with uh, a test drive of this vehicle. Because indeed it is now running under its own power. But, as I mentioned, it was a little bit of a journey to get here. So let's back up to when this thing arrived. When it arrived, it wasn't operating under its own power. And the people that delivered it really didn't know too much about it, as they're not the ones that were doing the conversion. So the first thing we did, and we have videos in this series I mentioned that go over uh, our inspection of this vehicle, inspection and testing, and what our findings were. And so we noticed, you know, pretty much out of the gate that the battery cells weren't really properly contained. The ones in the front box were in a box, but there was nothing holding them down and they could actually bounce up and make contact with an aluminum component board above. The cells that were in the rear were just, there was a plate holding them down, but they really weren't properly contained in the back. They just went up against the tailgate to the back seat and between the fender wells and were loose in there. So those are the things that, you know, first off, we knew that we had to take care of. So, first ones we did were the back. They were the easiest to get to. And we noticed there were some bad cells. So, that wasn't good news. So, and their voltages were all over. So, we realized we we're going to have to, you know, replace themselves, bottom balance the pack. That was pretty much, a, a, you know, the minimum and the containment. In the front, we had to remove the component board and the components weren't held on in a way that I felt comfortable with, so we removed all the components, removed the component board, put some hold downs for the uh, cells in that front box, shimmed up those cells so they're in there snug and held down, and then the board originally was rigidly mounted over those cells, so you couldn't, because it's an open box, there was no way to inspect, clean, check your interconnects. None of that was available without removing this board, which made your ordeal. So we designed, redesigned that component board so that it hinges. And so you can remove two bolts the whole component board hinges up. You can inspect, clean, whatever. Well, 
inspecting the cells in the front, we found, I think, three more cells that were bad. So replace the cells, bottom balance them, reinstall them, charge them as a pack, make the modifications to the component board, remount all the components uh, properly, proper containment and mounting for the rear battery box. Of course, we went through and checked all the wiring, you know, from the, you know, the source, you know, from the traction pack through all that circuit, um, the control circuits for the controller, um, the DC uh, circuits, and we found several issues, which again were discussed in this series. So we rectified all those issues, and of course the last thing to do is, you know, flip your main uh, uh, power switch, turn on your ignition, program the controller, and you're ready to roll, right? Not in this case. <laughs> Turns out that the um, pre-charge driver in the controller was blown. And so we uh, looked at, you know, sending it to the Curtis Service Center and having them repair it, and they said, no can do. So we ordered a replacement. And while we were waiting for this replacement controller to come in, we get notified that it's not on its way as we thought and they had no idea when it would. So now we're just hanging with no, uh, no end in sight. So it occurred to me one day that uh, we could just bypass the uh, pre-charge um, driver. And so we came up with a little circuit that allows us to circumvent the pre-charge uh, driver and yet still pre-charge the caps and drive this thing. And that was in a previous episode. I'm not going to explain all that. But anyway, it came with a simple little circuit to allow that to happen. So now the controller works. So we you know, program the throttle, program all of our other settings in the controller, and then time to test it, hit the throttle. Well. There was some noises that we weren't expecting, and there was a lot of vibration. I mean, a lot of vibration. And the noise was kind of strange. We couldn't really, you know, put our finger on what's causing this noise. So, it works, so, though. You know, the motor's turning over this, 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 you know, point that we've been trying to get to for months. We finally are there but we're not at the end yet. So <laughs> pull the motor out and bottom balance, or bottom balance, balance the flywheel and uh, clutch. But that wasn't quite the scenario we thought it was going to be. The guy that had historically does that for us has left the, you know, left the building. Uh, we don't know where he is, how to get a hold of him. So, came up with a way to do it ourselves, and we balanced both the, uh, well, all three, the, the coupler, the flywheel, and the clutch were all statically balanced and then checked dynamically. Because I thought I was going to, you know, static balance it first, get a little closer, then dynamic balance it. Turned out I, I got it so, so good doing it statically, we spun it up. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. And of course, there's a video of that also. So anyway, once that's done, reassemble everything, put it back in the vehicle, and the clutch, it's a hydraulic clutch, and you know, it wasn't adjusted properly from the get-go. And so, um, so the last thing we discovered after we get the thing in is that this clutch isn't, um, adjusted correctly 
adjust the clutch. Now it's ready. Now we can go on the test drive and you can come with us. So, but before we do, let me just give you a little shot of the, uh, the engine bay and uh, the uh, interior and then we'll go for that little ride. So the engine bay is uh, not our design. Like I said, somebody else had started this. We just went through and made some modifications. Uh, if you go back and look at the videos, this the the, the um, power the, the vacuum pump for the power brakes and the reservoir they were not securely mounted. Um, we had cabling that was, you know, going across edges. We had some coming out here. It was already starting to cut through the, uh, the um, insulation. And we point these things out to you just so that you'll be aware of it when you do your design. We're not trying to, you know, um, pick on anybody and say, oh, you did this wrong. What we're trying to do is this is what you need to do to do it right. And sometimes that's by saying, don't do that, do this. So we, you know, we also were not uh, in a position to be, um, you know, we, we were just trying to, to complete this, you know, in, like I said, inspection, repair, and completion. And so, you know, somebody, I don't know if they paid the, the other guy to do it or what, but, you know, we were charging them. That's what we do. We're in the conversion business. So we're mindful of billable hours. And so, you know, we could have done a lot more. But if you look at what it was, the status of when we got it, we have taken care of the thing to where it will now be a reliable electric vehicle. Now, the Jeep itself does need some attention. There's some things that haven't been completed. Um, and one of the ones I noticed, of course, is the horn. And, um, and so it looks like it's hooked up, but it doesn't work. Um, and there's wiring that's, you know, laying around that's part of the chassis. Some of it, it will never be used because it was um, for connections to the engine, which no longer exists. But we we redesigned the uh, the throttle. We did a lot of things that we felt needed to be done because they were not done in such a way that would have held up the test of time. And so here's a shot of the dash. Let me turn it on here. It's the vacuum pump you hear coming on. Vacuum pump goes off. Controller coming on. Nice and smooth now. Take a look at the other, earlier videos and you'll see that it was uh, quite out of balance. And because it had never been spun up, you know, they didn't know that. But we do recommend you have these things balanced before you install them. Saves you from having to pull it back out like we did. So that's this thing completed. The noise you hear is the power steering. It's a little noisy. But this one uh, quiets down after it sits for a few minutes and there's no load. It'll spool down and get quieter. 
And part of that noise, of course, is we're in a, a warehouse and you hear every little noise in here. You even hear all the noises from outside. So, but inside here, you know, the noises are kind of amplified. Out in the ambient world, you really don't hear these things. So anyway, we're going to charge it one last time. You can see in testing, we used uh, 12 amp hours. We will with the inverter on and the DC to DC converter, it's pulling about 1.8 amps out of the pack. 157.2 volts. So anyway, DC to DC converter is working. Let's see the voltage there. So we're we're finished, and you can go for a ride and. We'll show you what it uh, what it sounds like uh, testing the part. This thing doesn't have any license plates or anything. It's uh, I don't know if it's currently registered or anything. Um, it should be, but I don't know. When we bring you know when we only accept vehicles that are currently registered and insured, but. It, didn't come with any plates so no plates we're not going to drive it out in the public road so we just test drove it in the parking lot and uh, I'm getting tired of listening to that power steering and that's what we're going to show you was our little test drive in the parking lot this is just one of multiple test drives we did uh, test drive it prior to the one that we filmed but stay with me and We'll go for a little ride.
Well, I thank you for joining me on this uh, series featuring this uh, Jeep CJ7. We hope that you got some tidbits that uh, will help you in your um, journey of converting a vehicle from internal combustion to electric. Uh, YouTube videos are just, you know, little, little tiny snapshots. If you want the whole picture and you want it in a nice, you know, uh, chronological, systematic order and be able to learn everything you need to be able to do this yourself, do it right the first time and save yourself time and money and check out our workshops. We have a three-day workshop uh, that we do certain months out of the year. And then we have uh, our online EV workshops that are available anytime from anywhere. So check those out. And then as far as uh, YouTube goes, we've got two more vehicles here that are going to be featured in upcoming um, videos. And we've got one or two more that I think we're going to do series on. Uh, but... Uh, I think after that we're going to make some changes and we'll tell you about that when we get closer. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you down the road. I wish you all the best with your conversion.